hey, hey, hey. What is up, you little Whataburger chicken biscuits? I am, dude, if I could, I just wish I could let you know in person how excited I am right now. I've always been a go-getter, okay? I thought, man, one time, I remember I want to learn how to ride a bike. I was probably... I was probably three and a half years old, maybe four years old. Um, And I want to learn how to ride a bike. So what my parents did is they did what any good parent did is they, they went down the street and let me use my friend's bike. And I, dude, I didn't even use um, training wheels. I didn't use the wheels that attached to the bike to help the kids train on it. I just got on the bike and I, I vividly remember this. I got on the bike and dude, I just drove and you know, it was real cinematic it was real uh, unproblematic, some would say. I had a really easy time learning how to ride a bike. I remember another time, because I've just always been a go-getter, I remember another time that I wanted to, yeah, I want to learn how to play guitar. And uh, not to brag on myself, but uh, I've always had them, you know, my grandpa would say I always had them guitar picking fingers. And I, I had a friend, and her name was Madison. And she taught me how to play guitar, and dude, my very first day I learned a song, dude. I've always been a go-getter. And then I was sitting on the couch. Man, I don't even know when. Last week at some point, I made a Facebook post. And I said, you know what? Because I felt like doing a podcast. And then something inside of me said, hey. And I said, you know, how's it going? And it said, you know, you need to do a podcast. And uh, I reached out to a buddy. And he said, yep, yeah, you know, it's super easy. So here I am, baby. And I'm in my game room. Welcome to um, my house. Or as some people would say, my casa and I got all kind of as you can see just marvel stuff here and um man that's we're we're living we are living it up and I'm excited dude this is episode one you're here I'm here and I don't know where you find yourself today if I'm gonna be honest with you I'm recording this right now on a Sunday probably not gonna put it out till tomorrow morning so you could be on your way to work if you ain't listening it to on your way to work you could be getting off work You could be about to go on maybe a morning bicycle ride, maybe an evening bicycle ride. You could be on your way to the store, and I'm going to be honest with you, you can be on your way back from a store, and wherever you are today, know that, hey, I love you, and I'm proud of you, and right now, it's a Sunday, we just got out of church, church was awesome, man, and I'll tell you right now, and I'll tell you grandmama this too, I love Jesus, and if you don't know Jesus, man, give him a lifetime subscription to your heart, brother, because Jesus... Let me tell you something about Jesus. Jesus will make you buy a gift card for somebody that don't deserve a sack lunch. And I've always told people that because the truth is we don't deserve the sack lunch neither. And he gets us a gift card with endless funds on it. And uh, he's the man, dude. And I wish I could meet Jesus. I will one day. But uh, till then, I stay repping. But church was good. And I enjoyed church. But I just wanted to bring you guys, you know, your weekly dose of story. And uh, the title of this podcast is Corey's Stories. And uh, if you say that fast, you know, you might even sound like you're speaking in tongues a little bit, quarter start, you know, whatever it is. And I'm just, um, and I want to bring you a story. And this, t- today's story is, man, it was a terrifying time in my life, actually. Um, many of you know, I'm married. Here, I'll show you this. I have a, dude, I, my, my wife is smoking hot. Like, if I could, if I could put it into perspective, if you've ever, if you've ever eaten, La Casita, okay? La Casita is a delicious place. And some people, it's very controversial. You either love it or you hate it. But there's one dish at La Casita that will really just irritate my stomach. And, you know, the the product of that is my stomach becomes, you know, kind of, you know, bubbly and fuzzy. And it leaves the toilet bowl smoking hot. And equivalent to that is my wife. And my wife here, this is a picture from her prom because at my prom, I wore a camo tux, but this is hers. I don't know if you're able to see it in the camera. Dude, my wife, she, I remember the first time I seen her, and I was actually, you know, the first time I seen her, I was competing with a couple other guys, because they seen her in class, and I was like, I could tell they were looking at her like, hey, you know, what your name is, and I went, dude, I, I interrupted all of them, and I went and got a piece of gum from her, and the rest is history, but... Dude, my wife is smoking hot, like piping, like, dude, if I could, you know, if you don't know her and you kind of, if you have a glove on and you go and touch her, it'll put a hole in your glove. She is, she's kind of like that, uh, she's kind of, she's just, dude, she's beautiful. And, but she's kind of scary too. She can be really scary at sometimes. 
And I remember one day we had just gotten married and um, I'm not a cuddler. I hate cuddling. I, if it's cold and we're watching a movie, I can cuddle with you. A light cuddle, kind of barely even touching. But if it if we're trying to sleep, dude, get off, okay? I'll say that. I don't care if you're my wife or, you know, my third cousin. I'll elbow you in the knuckle. And I told her we were cuddling, we were trying to sleep, and she was cuddling me, and I said, get off. And uh, so she got off of me, and, and she falls asleep real fast. Some of you might be like that. Stormy can fall asleep in an instant. Like she, one time she fell asleep mid-conversation with me. We were talking. I think I was talking about the Astros or something. I said, baby, you like the Astros? And she said, yeah. Dude, like her face dropped. She just out like a light. And, um, I, oh, you know, hitting, you know, Springer Dinger out there, hitting, hitting dingers. And she said, oh, my God. Like, and she was out. And Stormy, she, how you know she's really asleep is she twitches real bad. She's a real bad twitcher, almost to the point where you think she's having a seizure. Um, like, I remember when we first got married, I, I used to check her heartbeat because I used to think she was dying. That's true. So I put my hand on her stomach. And, uh, and if it wasn't moving, sometimes I'd have to, you know, you know, dip it in her belly button just to see if she was alive. Cause the belly button will fluctuate real big. And, um, uh, but she like, dude, she'll be sleeping and she'll be laying there and she, you know, she's not all there. She's not all out. She's just kind of, you know, in that part where you're still kind of awake, still kind of asleep. And then in an instant she'll, she'll shake real bad. And then that's how, you know, she's asleep permanently. And she fell asleep real fast. It takes me about 45 minutes to an hour to fall asleep. Because I start singing in my head. And when I start singing in my head, dude, it, I'll, I'll, I'll have a little concert in my head. A little private concert. $5 admission all night. I'll get to where I'm singing. You know, I'm singing, um, who is that? Josh Turner. Baby lock them doors. And I'll run it all the way up, dude, to like a super freak. And I'll run it all the way down back to some country. Back to some, I cross my heart. And then I'll run it all the way to the side. And I'll hit some Bruno Mars. Um, you know, I'll catch a grenade for you. And I'll go all the way over here to some Katy Perry. And I'll just, dude, I'll just have a concert in my head while well, I was doing that. And, uh, we went to sleep pretty late. So it was about 1am and I'm just laying there having this concert, singing all the, you know, this big old beautiful melody and I'm, or met, med beautiful medley medley. And I'm laying there and I'm, dude, I'm just getting it. And then my wife, who's been asleep now for about an hour, she, dude, it was like, it was pitch black in the house and in our room. And she jumped like, we have a king size bed. Okay. We got that, we got that, you know, that king, that big old, you know, living room floor for a bed. It's just a big, big old bed. And she, we were in the middle of the bed and she jumped like, if you've ever seen wrestling, she did that Shawn Michaels thing. She jumped like this. Her back went up first like that. And she jumped just one move and landed on the floor. So she didn't even like roll over. She just jumped and was on the floor. And she started screaming at the top of her lungs. Like not this cute little scream that says, Oh, you know, baby got a boo boo on her, you know, on her kneecap or something. No, she jumped out of bed and started like, <laughs> like screaming as loud as she possibly could. And dude, I was laying there and I've seen plenty of scary movies, so I knew that this was probably the last time I was ever going to see my wife. And we had just gotten married, which was a real bummer. Um, but you know, if this ever if this type of thing ever went down, you'd want it to be right after you got married because you're not, you know, you're not too attached, I guess. So we, she jumped out of bed, leapt, started screaming out of her dude, out of her mind, and I was like laying there, and I was like, oh crap, my wife is possessed. That's honestly what I thought. I was just laying there singing tonight. Any man of mine better walk the line. And she jumped out of bed and I caught her and I seen her. And she's screaming and I thought, my wife is possessed. And what, you know, after, you know, after she gets possessed, she's probably, you know, she's probably going to die in like five minutes. So I jumped out of bed and I embraced her and I hugged her real tight. And it was pitch black and I'm hugging her. She's screaming right in my ear. My eardrums just, dude, it's just you know, flipping and, and I look at her, I pull her away from me. She's screaming, like, ah, my eyes are adjusting. And, uh, I look at her in the eyes in the midst of her screaming and I said, baby, I love you. Okay. And, you know, a little tear started coming down. I said, baby, I love you. And I'll never forget you. And as much as I wanted to have a baby with you, you kind of ruined that. You kind of ruined that for us. We're not going to have a baby anymore because 
number one, you're possessed. Number two, you're probably about to die. And I just remember her slowly start, like something I said kind of, you know, made her heart like come back to itself. Like she could hear my voice and she could hear the adamant, 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 she could hear my adamant voice and she could hear how serious I was and how in pain I was that my wife um, was about to die. And she, you know, I could, her scream started slowly coming back down to, and it kind of almost got to a whisper. So she, you know, screamed, ha, ah! and then it kind of went, ha, ah! And she kind of got to a whisper, and I looked at her, and I said, you know, it's happening. You're fading away from me. You're slipping. And then she just looks at me. I'll never forget it. She looks at me. She stops screaming, and uh, she looks me in the eye, and she says, what are you doing? And I, it, you know, it hit me. I didn't know if she was, like, possessed by, like, you know, this, you know, a varsity cheerleader or what. But uh, she just looked at me, what, what are you doing? And I was like, you know, what do you mean, what am I doing? We're on the side of the bed. It's 1 a.m., and you're screaming at the top of your lungs. What am I doing? I'm the weirdo here. I'm the dude who had to just start planning my life out as I'm hugging you, and I'm the weirdo here. And she says, um, why are you just hugging me on the side of the bed? And, you know, this is what you women do. Um, y'all make, you know, you just flip every situation over. Yeah, I'm going to go on a rant about it, dude. This is my podcast. Y'all just flip every situation over on the man, okay, which is totally not cool. And she's just saying, oh, like, what are you doing? It's like pitch black and you're holding me, telling me you love me. Like, what's going on? And I was like, don't act like you were just not possessed. Okay. I don't know if this is you talking or, you know, the, the spirit talking, but you're not going to talk to me like that, whether you're possessed or not. Okay. I'm just not going to put up with it. I am the leader of this household. You know, I'm straight man of this house. I'm, um, and I told her you're not going to talk to me like that. And she's like, um, like, can we just get back in bed and go to sleep? And I said, I would love that. Cause honestly, I wasn't even asleep yet. I was singing Shania Twain, any man of mine. And you just jumped out of bed with one leap, started screaming at the top of your lungs. I jumped out and hugged you cause I, not, I thought I'm never going to see you again. I thought we were never going to have kids again. I thought I was going to have to restart and, you know, go get another girlfriend, act like I liked her and go through the whole dating process, which the dating game has changed like crazy. And, you know, now you're calling me weird and saying we need to get back in bed. So we got back in bed and... I did not go to sleep the whole rest of the night. If you know me, I'm a prayer. I'll pray any time of day. It don't matter if it's if it's two o'clock, three o'clock. You know, it don't matter if we're at a birthday party and you know the little girl starts getting crazy because she didn't get the present she wanted. I'll pray over her. That God just fixes her heart immediately. So I started praying, and uh, and I started praying, and I didn't. It was one a.m. This happened. So it was about 105, maybe, 106 and a half. And I started praying, dude, and I did not, and mark my words, I wouldn't lie to you or or your aunt or your auntie. And I didn't go to sleep that whole night. I didn't sleep one second. And Stormy, right, we got into bed. She was like, you're just acting out like a light. You know, I don't know why you're hugging me at pitch blank and then uh, out like a light. And I wasn't, I didn't sleep at all because the whole night, and I waited till she jolted real bad. I laid my hand on her head because she, you know, she won't wake up for nothing. It don't matter if it's, you know, and I think we just went into the Greek alphabet. It don't matter if Hurricane, you know, Epsilon is out there. You know, if, if I'm holding her head, you know, she ain't going to wake up. So I just put my hand on her head. I went and got a little bit of olive oil out the kitchen, rubbed it all over her face, kind of, you know, from the eyes up all the way to the top of the ear, you know, like I was edging her up. And, dude, I just prayed for her, and I prayed for her all night. And into the morning, she woke up, dude, I was still awake, still praying for her. And, um, and that's, how, that's how it went. And I looked at her, and I said, you know, what was your deal last night? And she said, you know, I was thinking the same thing about you. You kind of acted out of, you know, your boundaries. And I said, okay, but I don't know what that means. And uh, I said, you know, were you dreaming? What was it? And she's like, you know, I was dreaming. And if you know Stormy, she could be a little over dramatic. Okay. She can be a little over dramatic. She said that she dreamed that a big um dark, like a big black jellyfish was just coming down at her face. And she said it was almost about a big black jellyfish with big old long tentacles was almost about to grab her face in her dream. It was coming down from our ceiling, which we won't even have water nearby. I mean, I guess if you left the tub on, but we don't have any like a water source. So, the, you know, the possibility of a jellyfish even being in our bedroom was highly unlikely. But she said that a big black jellyfish was coming towards her face, so that's what prompted her to jump out of 
the bed and start screaming. And I said, you know, that's really not a good excuse for what happened last night. And, but that's her story, dude. And she was sticking to it. And, um, to this day, like she, you know, it happened again, like, you know, probably a month ago, but she didn't do it as bad, but she said this time it was a big black spider. So I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's going to be next, but you know, she still jumped out of bed and, and scream, but it wasn't as, you know, it wasn't as bad as, uh, luckily spiders aren't as scary as jellyfish, I guess, but I don't know what it's going to be next, dude, and I kind of, you know, I don't know what to do, so I, you know, I pray for her every night, and I'll ask you to pray for her, too, that, you know, just the Holy Spirit does something to her heart, but, you know, she, she's afraid of animals that are big and black, and I don't know, I don't know what that's from, I don't know what that is, I mean, I've had a dream one time that, um, that I was getting, you know, if you ever had those dreams where you're getting chased by something and you kind of can't run as fast as it's running and, and, but I was running from John Cena, the wrestler and he put me in a headlock. And when I woke up, I woke up gasping for air. And I don't know if you've ever been choked by John Cena, but man, that guy's got some biceps. And I think he, you know, I'd, I'd be willing to say that he works out a lot and he had me in a headlock and I came, I said, I said, John. I said, John, I'm your biggest fan. John, I'm your biggest fan, John. And then right when I was about to take my last breath, I woke up like that. And uh, But I've never had anything, you know, I never had a big black creature come at me like that and uh, almost swallow my head. But, you know, we've all been in that situation and, you know, not necessarily that same, but we've all had a dream that's kind of scared us. So I guess we're, I knew where she was coming from. But, you know, the moral of the story today is, you know, kind of, kind of just, you know, snuggle your partner. But if they're getting, if they're being possessed by a big black jellyfish, just tell them all your feelings then. Cause you don't want to leave anything out. Like, you know, when I hugged Stormy, I laid everything out on the table, you know, and I told her, you know, what I loved about her. I told her, you know, I told her what made me angry about her, you know, while I was hugging her. Cause you, you know, you don't know if it's the last time you'll talk to her. So I was hugging her and I said, baby, I love you so much. Like, I'll never forget you. You're you're the smoking hottest thing I've ever seen in my life. And then I, you know, I started getting, you know, real deep and emotional. I said, you're the smoking hottest thing I've ever seen in my life. I wish you would clean more. <laughs> I wish you clean more. I wish you, uh, I wish you would put dryer sheets in your shoes because it kind of stink. <laughs> it kind of smell bad. And, and I wish you would compliment me more. And, uh, and, you know, I laid everything out. None for question. Cause you don't know if that's the last time you'll see anybody. So I guess, you know, I guess the moral of this story is, you know, whenever you see somebody, just really lay out all your emotions. You know, if you're, you know, you may be listening to this or watching this on YouTube and you're thinking, you know, hey, we're going to mom's house tonight for meatloaf, you know, whoever your mom is. And you might be thinking, you know, this is the last time I could see my mom. And I would just encourage you to just lay your feelings out there. You know, some of you are married, some of you are fiancéd. I would just encourage you, you know, wherever you are, you know, in your... uh in your relationship, just lay everything out, man. Just come home and say, Hey, you know, I don't know if you're going to be eaten by a big black jellyfish tonight. And I just want to let you know how I feel about you. What I think about you. I love you, but on the same time, you got some work to do. I mean, you could fix a lot of things about yourself and, you know, maybe they'll do the same thing, maybe to strengthen your marriage, but you know, that's all I got. And, um, thank you for tuning in for, you know, episode one of Corey's stories. And, uh, you know, I never know how long these things are going to be. I never know how short they're going to be probably on the other end of the spectrum, but I can always guarantee you I got a story for you. And uh, we'll, right now we'll probably only do one story a week, maybe two stories a week. But, you know, if I get, you know, if I remember something during, the, you know, during the week, I'll probably, I'll record and I'll tell you the story. And, uh, you know, it might be about Stormy. It might be about the, you know, that little kid down the street who always, who always throws his uh, Frisbee in my yard. And I don't know who it's going to be about. But I'll tell you what, if he keeps throwing his Frisbee in my yard, he's about to have one less Frisbee. And I'll tell you that. And I'll tell your grandma that too. But I love you guys. You know, thank you so much for watching. And, I, man, I hope you have a great day. And don't forget, you know, let Jesus in your heart. And, uh, and until then, I'll see you later, baby. Sayonara.